Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In my last video, I have showed you how you can use the browser automation to extract the data from WAMP. And for example, we took a LinkedIn example where I wanted to extract all the posts related to my company's profile into one of the Excel sheet and in turn save that Excel sheet into SharePoint. So these are the quick steps I'm just recapping. So launch a new Microsoft Edge, then extract data. So this activity we used from browser uh, automation, we extracted the data, save that Excel, convert that Excel file to binary and use that create file SharePoint preview feature to save that file into SharePoint. So as promised in uh, today's video, I'm going to show you how you can actually extract or get the data from the Excel and save that into SharePoint list. So I have created one of the SharePoint list. I'll show you. So this is my SharePoint list, which right now is just simple two columns, title and links. So this link would be as a link to the post and title would be the post of the title. So now in this session, I'm just going to tell you how you can actually read the data from that Excel file and store that into a list form where like a title field so that it in turn can be used over your intranet site to render the post in a UI fashion, like in the intuitive fashion. So that can be done. So let's start. So I'll just go to my Power Automate once again and I'll just close the existing Power Automate. And in this Power Automate desktop, I'll be creating a new flow and I'll name that as uh, LinkedIn feed to SharePoint list. And I'll create it. So in last session, I actually used this uh, browser automation web extraction actions. So if I go over here, I use that web extraction to get data. And but in this video, I am going to tell you again, like how to use the tools, uh, especially the recorder to record the steps. So the same UI element would be created, but in a different fashion. So let's do that. So uh, we have to start with the uh, initial step of opening our Excel file. So for that, I'll be using launch Excel action where I'll be selecting my Excel file. So this file you can actually uh, launch or read file from your SharePoint or the document which you saved or you can uh, open the document which we saved intermediately before uh, saving that to SharePoint this book Excel is. If you have seen my previous video then you are aware about it. This is having the LinkedIn feed. So it's an intermediate step there. So that right now you can just simply use that intermediate step and save it. And once the Excel is launched, you have to read the values or the data from the Excel. So for that, we are going to use the read Excel. And in this Excel instance, we have binded from the previous step. From retrieve, we'll be retrieving all the available values in the worksheet. And the variable produced will be Excel data. So this Excel data we are going to work with when we are going to save that into SharePoint. So I'm just clicking save. And after that, I'll be launching my recorder so that I can actually capture these steps to create any item into SharePoint list. So let me launch it from here. You can directly launch it or from this tools, you have this recorder, you can launch it from there as well. So I'm just launching it and going back to my SharePoint list. So over here, you can see that this uh, pop-up for recorder is opened up where you would be seeing all the steps, whatever we are capturing and the intern UI element would be created and we can modify the UI element selectors per our need. So I am just going to record it, the steps which I'm doing. So let me just drag this sideways so that we can have space to look at what I'm doing. So I'm clicking on this new button and over right hand side, you can see like it has created two uh, actions launch web browser and clicking element this one and now I'll type into this first text box let's say test one and then type into the second input text box it would contain the links as some link and the final step I'll be clicking on the save button so right now you see like I have got two actions created on my right hand side popular text and popular text field from web page and once i click on save it will create one more action that for button so now you can see like i have this open save 
populate elements and then I can just simply say done because I am done with my recording and I can click on done. So right now you see like it has added those actions whatever we did on the recorder as open opening of the page and then clicking on the span new then populate input text populate the second input text and then final one is clicking on this open save page so this final save cancel button they they this one was extra so i can just remove it so you have to decide like what elements actually make sense to you and over here you can see like this has added these steps at the top so but my these two steps has to be at the top launch excel and read from excel so i'll just move them to top i can simply drag and drop and the last one as well i'll just simply drag and drop and over here the, with these steps we have to do some processing because it's the row data will be one by one adding in the in this automation so for that i have to use the for each loop so i'll use for each and just drop that loop and bind that loop with my excel data the variable which was produced in the last step and in this for each we are going to have these uh, population of input text fields done and clicking on the save button so i'll just drag my all the actions which we recorded from the previous step into this for each and done so uh, once this is done uh, we have to close the excel as well so i'll just use this close excel action so that lastly my excel should be closed And this Excel instance, we need to bind it. All right. So now the next step comes, which is the important one, is to set up UI elements. So on the right hand side, if you see extreme right, we have this UI elements. In this UI elements, we all the elements are listed over here. So the span new is the new button. Input text field is the input text title field, and the second one is the link field. And these last two which are which are there uh, these are again like uh, iterated from the same uh, div con the title components but we can remove it we can ignore these ones and the lastly we have this open save a uh, span save so uh, we have deleted so probably like i can remove this as well from here as well because we don't want this element so directly span save would work for us so now we are going to change the selector for this because as we know that SharePoint form is a dynamic form. So if I inspect the element, you will see the IDs of these I, uh, this uh, text input type of text is always varying. Whenever we create, we refresh the page, we open the pop-up, so ID would be totally different. So that's why we have to write our own custom selector so that we can pick this title or input field. And I have written this custom selector for Quick reference so for new button clicking we have this custom selector where this html body div equal to zero div equal to one and all these like is it's traversing through the end span so i can directly copy this one i'll share that into description as well so that you can also directly copy rather than rebuilding everything from scratch so i'll just go to my power domain and we'll open up this ui element I did this element and under this text editor i'll just simply change that to this custom selector so i'll just click save so it will save that and now in the input element which is being binded to this text field is input text title required empty field editor so which means like this field is that so we have to bind it to or edit this field go to text editor again for the first input text box, I have trust traverses through this input and replacing this custom selector into this UI element. And the same one for the second text field, we have this input text field link empty field editor, which means this UI element. I'll add this text editor and will simply use this input field, second input field. So which is basically like uh, traversing through the divs. So it's uh, equal to one div, equal to two div, and finding the input element through it and clicking save. 
and then the same thing I'm going to do because I'm going to call this open save button. So for that, I'll just clicking edit text editor. We'll go back to my this save button custom selector. We'll paste this custom selector and save it. So I have just updated my all the UI elements with the custom selectors rather than static one, which was created from recorder. So now I'm going to bind it with the actual value. So right now, if I click on this, you can see like the text binded is the, uh, the test which we initially passed while recording. So we have to bind it through the custom row, the Excel data which we are getting and the Excel data, the current item because we are into for each loop. So I'm just selecting current item and this title field we are getting from the column number one. So I'm just saving it as this. The link field, I'll just remove this again and in from the variable, I'll set, select current item and the, this item is zero. So the link field we are getting at the first column and the title field at the second column. So I'm just clicking save and over here we are done. We are done with the for each loop, saving the data and closing the Excel as well. So I'll just save it and we'll try to run it to see like whether we are able to create the automatically items into the SharePoint list or not from that Excel. So I'll just run it. So right now it launched me over the Power Automate and started creating those items. So it traversed one item, just created second item. So everything is being done using the flow. Power Automate desktop. And it's saved. So this is how like it saved it. We can go back to our flow. And we did not find any errors. That means like it runs fine. And this is how uh, we can actually read the items, all the rows, traverse those rows and create this input field UI elements, then add the custom selectors and then save it. So the same operation right now we did with the this uh, static Excel instance, which we were creating as a say, step number two in our previous video. And you can very well uh, read this Excel file directly from SharePoint, the library, which where we, where we share saved and then traversed all the rows. And then again, like do the same selector, custom selector operations and then save it. So I hope uh, combining these two videos, you would able to uh, extract any of the site and save that into a SharePoint list as a final result. So I hope like it would be a useful uh, for you because it was for me. And if you still have any questions or if you want to connect, like drop me your comments. And if you like the video, please do, do like. Thanks. That's it for today.